right, we got some activity in the sky. A KP4, it's heading our way. What's up gang, in this video I'm gonna cover how I time-lapse the Northern Lights under a nearly full moon using a Sony on-camera interval shooting function. I'm gonna be diving into the settings, the gear I use, and from there straight into the computer for some editing and how to export a 4K time-lapse in Adobe Premiere Pro. Being both a photographer and filmmaker throughout the years, I found the art form of time-lapsing to capture the best of both worlds. Time-lapse photography is basically the capture of consecutive photographs over a long period of time and then shown quickly in a series so that a slow action appears to happen quicker like clouds moving through the sky to even the northern lights dancing above. With that said, let's jump into the camera gear, camera settings, and how to time lapse with the Sony interval shooting function. Since the day of its release, the Sony A7R 3 has been my main go-to camera body. For two specific reasons, it's 42 megapixels, allowing me to export up to an 8K time lapse if I choose to. And since I do take my images to print, it'll allow me to print in large scale format with confidence. The second reason is its ability to shoot video in low light situations, which I quite often do under the natural lighting of the moon. My go-to lens for astrophotography in general has to be the Sony G Master 24mm 1.4. I would hail it as the king of the night for one specific reason. I haven't seen any lens on the market yet to produce sharper stars than the G Master 24 at the furthest corners, especially at f1.4. Let's talk about camera and time-lapse setup. In night photography across the board, you want full control. Make sure you're shooting in raw format for maximum dynamic range and switch your camera to manual mode and manual focus. It's also good to note to set your camera to a delay. This will help to prevent any camera shake while taking your test shots. Because it was just two days shy of the full moon, it allowed me to shoot at a very low ISO of 400. This helped to produce an extremely clean image sequence. Setting your color balance is based on personal taste. The moon in some ways does resemble the sun as it gives off a natural warm glow. But on the other hand, it is dark out and you could go incandescent. After deciding on a proper color balance and ISO, I took a few minutes, took my time and I dialed in on a happy balance of 10 seconds at f2.8. Next up is to take your time to find perfect focus. The last thing you wanna do is get home after a big trip and look at your photos and find out that they're not in focus. Take your time, take a few test shots, preview the images, zoom in and make sure that the stars are razor sharp. What about filters for nighttime photography? If I see any type of light pollution in the sky, I reach for my Hoya intensifier. What this filter does is that it reduces yellowish and greenish color cast from artificial city lights. After checking in on your camera settings and your focus, make sure you check on your focus. Now the fun is set to begin. The next thing to do is open up the interval shooting function which is on page one. Set that to on. Now consider your camera shooting start time. Although you can set it to roughly 99 minutes, I set it to one second. With a one second start time, the time lapse will begin as soon as you hit that shutter button. Now let's take a look at the shooting interval. I set that to one second as well to maintain a smooth transition between each 10 second capture. So what about the number of shots taken during your time lapse? This is a big one. I personally set this for 240 shots because it will produce depending on your exposure time, a time lapse a sequence for roughly eight to 10 seconds. That finally brings us to the AE tracking sensitivity. This is always set to high. It won't affect the process while in manual mode, but it's very useful in aperture priority when I'm capturing a sunrise or sunset. It really works well in calculating a much smoother transition in exposure from frame to frame. There's nothing left to do other than to hit that shutter button to start the time lapse. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We got the lights on the last night. So sweet. This is amazing. Woo. 
All right, now it's time to edit this image sequence down. So what I primarily do first before we get into the editing is create a time-lapse output folder on my desktop. You can see it right here. It's called TL output folder, this abbreviation for time-lapse. So now we're gonna jump into Adobe Lightroom. And just to save some time, I've already imported the images. As you can see here in all photographs, I have 240 images. And at the top right below the histogram, you have my camera settings. ISO 400, captured at 24 millimeters at f2.8 at 10 seconds. So if you look to the left, you're going to see a bunch of my presets down here. I've already done some editing on some previous photographs from the night before. I saved it in my Astro presets. I just called it Northern Lights. So I'm gonna apply that look right there. Pretty basic, nothing too crazy. I do wanna point out up here in the top right corner, Profile Artistic 2. More often than not, I come across people that use Lightroom on the daily that does not take full advantage of this feature. Either they keep it on default, which is Adobe Color, or just don't know about it at all. There is a lot of picture profiles to browse through and I can't stress how much this influences my editing outcome. I feel this is a perfect look for this scene. I just feel that Artistic 2 adds a lot of detail and shadow to the darkened areas, especially for astrophotography, without adding any type of grain. Let's compare the difference with Adobe Color. It's a lot darker. Let's go back to Artistic 2. And if you zoom in and see here with Artistic 2, it's pushing more details and shadows in the darkened areas without giving you any noisy grain. So what we have left to do is apply that same creative look to the rest of the image sequence. So what we do next is head down to the bottom left corner, hit copy. You're going to see this copy setting box right here. I'm going to have everything clicked. Hit copy. And then holding down the shift key, you hit the 240, last photo, and you hit sync. And then you're going to see another box come up that says synchronizing settings. Make sure everything is checked and you synchronize. Pasting settings. All right, we have applied that same look to the entire image sequence. After making sure all 240 images are selected on the bottom, hit up to file. And then I'm going to export these images to my TL output folder. And let's head down to file settings. My file settings are to set image format at JPEG and color space to Pro Photo RGB at 100 quality and to make sure your resolution is at 300. Okay, everything else is looking good. We are all set to go. Let's send those 240 files to that TL output folder by hitting export on the bottom right. And there we go. Prepping the export. So as you can see at the top left corner, it is exporting the 240 files. So this may take seconds, minutes, hours. It all depends on how fast your computer is. All right, we're halfway there. After this is complete and you have all 240 images in your selected folder on your desktop, as you can see it's right in the TL output folder. You have 240 images right here. These are all the JPEGs right here, one to 240. Now we're gonna open up Premiere Pro. So this is possibly the easiest step and the most fun for me. We're gonna create a new project. We're just gonna call this Northern Lights Time Lapse. And I'm gonna save it in my master folder. And there it is right there, that's the open template. So once you opened up your workspace, we're gonna head up to File, head down to New, find Sequence. Then you're gonna see this new sequence box right here. So this is where I'm gonna give the sequence a new name. I'm just gonna call this 4K Time Lapse. So make sure you locate DSLR 1080p at 24. That'd be under the 1080 right here. But we're gonna switch the settings on this. So we're gonna head to Settings. We're gonna find frame size. This is where we're gonna change the frame size of the timeline to UHD or 4K. Uh, the resolution specs are gonna be 3840 by 2160. So this would be 3840 on the horizontal side and vertical side is 2160. We're gonna hit okay. Cool, you can see right here at the bottom left, the 4K time lapse, that's the sequence right here. This is where all the fun begins. 
So after completing that, you can now import your image sequence from your output folder on your desktop. The way you do this is by hitting Command I on an Apple or Control I on a PC. So I'm gonna hit Command I on my Apple. There's the desktop right there. Teal output folder, open that up. Once you found the folder, here it is right here, make sure you only highlight the first image of the group. Head down to the option tab on your bottom left corner and you're gonna see image sequence in the middle click on that and now import on your bottom right that is your sequence right there so Premiere Pro did it all for you put that entire sequence together now I'm gonna click on the sequence so now all you have left to do is drop that sequence into your timeline and customize the fit so making sure your selection tool is on hover over the drag video and drag that down. So now you're gonna see this clip mismatch warning. It's because the time lapse sequence is much larger than the 4K timeline. It's probably close to 8,000 pixels wide, but that's okay, because I'm going to customize to fit. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So we're gonna actually keep existing settings. As you can see in the window right here, the resolution of the time lapse is much larger than the scale of the timeline but that's not a problem. We're gonna customize the fit. So making sure your clip is checked on the bottom here, we're gonna head up to effects, control to your top left and find scale. So finding scale, we're gonna resize this time lapse down. You can either scroll left and right or you can just type it in. I'm gonna type in 52. That's really nice right there. After scaling down, you can use position again under motion to either move the time lapse left or right or up and down. Let's go up a little bit just to show a little bit more foreground. There, that's awesome right there. So this works for me. We're gonna head back down to the timeline, adding our in and out points. So on the left side, we're gonna hit I and then finding the end of the time lapse. We can hit O, that's looking good right there. So this part right here is very crucial. Make sure you have your in and out marks set on either sides of your sequence first before starting to render your time lapse. So after having your in and out markers set, we're gonna head up to sequence to render. Find render in and out, and rendering is in progress. All right, let's check out that time lapse. Not bad, not bad. Such an awesome night. All right, we're gonna take this back to the start of the time lapse. And now, from there, it's off to export. Keeping the same in and out marks set. Head up to file, heading up to file. Then head down to export. Then from export, head to media, to the right. Click on that. And there you're gonna find the export setting platform. So I'm gonna run you through my export, go to settings from top to bottom. There is probably a few different ways you can do this, but I found these settings for myself to render the highest quality time-lapse sequences. So starting from the top, format. Let's make sure we're set on QuickTime. Preset, let's go to Apple ProRes 422HQ. Then we have the output name, we're gonna give it a title. I'm going to direct it to my master folder. There we go. Moving downward, video codec is Apple ProRes 422HQ. Scrolling down, just making sure. You can see right there, the width is 3840 by 2160. This is a UHD, basically 4K, ultra high def. Frame rate, making sure this is at 23.976. Render at maximum depth needs to be checked. And as you can see here, rendering at maximum bed depth improves the video quality but increases how long encoding takes. Maximum quality is on the top of my list. So after making sure that is checked, you wanna check on 16 BPC. After making sure this is checked, we're gonna head down to use maximum render quality. We're gonna make sure that box is checked as well. And after that, we're basically at the finish line. Just making sure everything is okay, looking good. All right, we're gonna hit that export on the bottom right. And there you go, this export may take you seconds, minutes, or hours, depending on how fast your computer is.
Awesome, awesome. The export is complete. The time lapse is looking good. Right on, gang. That is about it. I covered what time lapse photography is all about, my go to camera gear, and the general settings it took to time lapse the northern lights under a nearly full moon. We also ran through the basic setup of the Sony on camera interval shooting function, and from there, straight to the computer for the edit and final export of the time lapse sequence. I hope you found this video fun and educational. Until next time, happy shooting.